going on everybody near 17 here and we are back for a different kind of video today 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 we are talking about Final Fantasy now I don't know about you guys but I am incredibly hype I mean everyone knows if you guys know me and follow me on Twitter be sure to do that by the way link in the description below um, talk about Pokemon Final Fantasy Square Enix stuff and Dragon Ball those are my three main focuses uh, we don't have any Pokemon news right now and this is huge to me and I'm extremely passionate about Final Fantasy, so I want to share that with you guys and go over this reaction to the trailer that dropped today. Um, I did not expect it. It was rumored. I didn't think it would happen because hashtag Square Enix, but it happened. And I got home and looked at my phone and everyone said, oh, FF7 Remake at E3. I'm like, y'all are bugging. What the hell are you talking about? So I did not know that this dropped until like an hour ago. <laughs> so... I hope you guys are just as excited as I am. If you have never played Final Fantasy VII, I strongly advise it. It's on Switch right now for $14.99 or $15.99. And this game is it's a remake, so it's going to be completely different. But what I want to do today is go over and break down the trailer for you guys and kind of talk about it with you because I got to get my excitement out. Okay, we're recording. I always got to double check because I don't trust myself. Just saying. Um, so let's check it out. Let's see what the case is here, and I'd like to break this down with you guys, so let's do that. <sighs> the turn draws closer. I thought there was going to be a narration by What's-His-Name, that would have been awesome. So first of all, Ares looks amazing. She looks so good. She's waifu material. Not waifu, waifu. Like, look at her, you just want to like, you just want to hold her hand and go walk in the park. Like... <laughs> She looks gorgeous, and they did such a good job. I mean, look at that. And I don't have the sound playing right now because I'm not trying to get copyrighted, but um, definitely play the music on, you know, go watch the state of play, check it out after you watch this video and, and see. So this is, these are the Shinra soldiers. Uh, Shinra's the, the big bad guy in Final Fantasy VII, one of them. And in the beginning of the game, they're basically trying to kill the planet with all these reactors. They're sucking all the life energy out of the planet and Cloud and company are breaking in to try and stop that process. So that's what this scene is for. Um, the Shinra soldiers look really good. And this is more than likely the scene where, not when he jumps off the train, I think it's where um, you get in a train, you're escaping, and you're, you're kind of walking down and they acknowledge that you're there. And then you come down in the ramp in the railway and you kind of just walk down the underground tunnel and you get continuous encounters. So I think that's what this is replicating um, because the train doesn't look big enough. It could be though. It could be when he gets off the train. It's one of those two things, but um, there's no wild encounters like in the original game. It's all overworld, like Final Fantasy 15, so, which is pretty cool. I don't know what this is. Missiles, like I don't remember. Oh, that's the Red Scorpion. Okay, that makes sense. I didn't see that at first. So that's the Red Scorpion. That's the first main boss you fight. Uh, it's an iconic boss fight. Everyone knows it. And it looks like possibly after the fight, he does that and blows up the stuff to try and make it fall on you. And then, yeah, so let me move it along here. So this is Jessie. She looks great too. She looks damn good. And then over here we have Biggs and then we have Wedge. Biggs and Wedge, very famous Final Fantasy characters. They're different in each game, but everyone recognizes the names. And Jessie looks really good. Yeah. She looks amazing. Um, so this is the scene here where Cloud, you've uh, planted the device in the Maker Reactor and you're trying to blow it up. And you've planted the bomb already and you're trying to escape. Now in the normal game, they give you 20 minutes. You gotta get the hell up out of there before it blows up. Um, Cloud just looks so good. Like, how they scale the environment, how they scaled his weapon to his, his character and everything, it just looks so good. Um, one thing I wanted to notice too, the commands menu is very interesting. Um, you see here it's blank, and it looks like you hit circle to bring up your menu. But if you look back on some of the gameplay, um, I wanted to point this out. You have these two commands here. Now, I don't know if that's just like normal attacks or prompt commands that come up when a cutscene's coming, but I noticed that and I thought it was very interesting. Um, so let's play it here. So again, you're still trying to escape. It looks like something collapses underneath you. They're going to really revamp that introductory scene. Uh, you breaking into the maker reactor and this is obviously one of those things that it looks like 
it collapses underneath you and you gotta escape. So you can uh, switch control between the characters. You can see here Cloud and the main, whoever's controlling this, the, whoever's playing the game is controlling Barrett. And it looks like his weapon, you just lock onto an enemy and you just attack. So that's pretty cool. You still have standard HP, you still have standard MP. Tifa is somewhere, but they're hiding her for E3 because she's got the badonkadonks. And hey, I'm just calling it for what it is. People love Tifa. Tifa is easily top five most popular female protagonist in any game ever. Like she is iconic. So they're definitely saving her um, and focusing on Cloud and Barrett for right now. But it looks really cool. As you can see here, super dope combos. Um, this is interesting too. So the battle menu is like Kingdom Hearts. So you have a shortcut menu with Cloud's Limit Break Braver. It's his first Limit Break that you get. And if Limit Breaks are commands and you can just use them, that's brokenness. You know what? <laughs> I mean, that would be wild. I'm thinking it's going to be like Kingdom Hearts where you equip abilities and maybe you have different ability sets with each Limit Break on them. That way you can kind of balance it so you don't just have cross slash meteor rain on the slash in a shortcut with potions. <laughs> so I'll be, I'll be interested to see how they do that, implement the limit breaks. Um, I don't see any materia. At this point in the game you would have some materia, I believe. So that's interesting. Um, there's Wedge again talking to Barrett. Look at Ares. Man. She looks so good. Look at the... the her eyes because she's an ancient is what it's called she's one of the last very last ancients um, superhuman beings basically and they're special kinds of people so play Final Fantasy 7 if you want to know what I'm talking about but she looks just so good and this is the scene where it looks like Cloud gets away and he first gets introduced to Eris um, they've already met at the church and everything and now they're they're leaving and she's the local flower girl in her town that she's in um, it's really really cool this scene here cloud looks really good he looks like admin children cloud but more polished I think and more video game like his character doesn't isn't a complete replica from advent children but it definitely is just as detailed gosh she looks amazing dude I, I, I really appreciate that and whoa I don't know what the hell this thing is I've never seen this enemy in Final Fantasy VII. Of course, I may not recognize a lot of enemies in Final Fantasy VII because they're going to be... Obviously, if you compare the graphics from the original game to this, there's no contest. So, I may not recognize a lot of enemies in this, but I definitely don't recognize this one. And it is a remake. Okay? Not a remaster. Not a reimagining. It is a direct remake of the game. So, they, this could be a new enemy. They could have easily added in so many different things. And they will. They'll add in a lot. Um... But that looks super dope. So you can see Ares has her staff. She's ready to go. Cloud's ready to go. Um, you can see her fighting in the background. Again, you have this menu come up. So it must just be a permanent menu with certain attacks. Maybe like heavy attacks as opposed to normal attacks. Um, and you use them in combination. I'll be interested to see how Tifa's limit break works. Because she's got slots. And very similar to Zell from Final Fantasy VIII as well. And that... There's a lot of interaction there to trigger her limit break, so that'll be interesting to see. But um, this looks just so good. You can tell how they scale the environment to really match where you were. I, I, this is the most beautiful scaling I've seen. Period. Like this here is breathtaking stuff. Like it, they did an amazing job. It looks like you have a block function, cloud block the damage. So that's really cool. I really like they did that. Very similar to Kingdom Hearts take less damage if you block it um, so that looks like just a normal encounter because I remember those enemies that looks like clouds grenade or uh, Barrett's grenade bomb limit break possibly or just some kind of like special move because he shoots boom yeah grenade bomb so it probably hits him on impact and then or it could be this back blast move I don't know it's hard to say this is Cloud's. Oh my God! This is Cloud's cross slash limit break. It looks so good. Now, let's see. What's interesting though is if you look at the menu, and then when the attack is triggered, you don't see cross slash as an option. 
it never comes up. So when the how do you use your limit breaks? It's gonna be very interesting. And it looks so good. Oh my god, it looks so good. This is that red scorpion that we saw in the beginning. He's the first main boss that you fight. It's very it's a very iconic fight. And it looks like they're gonna edit some of that of the cutscene, basically. And after the fight, you're probably gonna have to run away, and that's kind of where you saw Cloud hanging down earlier. That's probably after what well, is after this. So um, that'll be really cool to see how they remake everything. And this, who we got? Who do we got? The King Sephiroth himself. Um, if you guys watch the state of play, his voice to me is a little disappointing. It's not directly like Advent Children, which is what I loved. Um, it's more vibrant it's a little bit more energetic a little bit more like simple i guess i don't really know what how to say it but if you compare the two voices with advent children and this they're definitely different if it's the same voice actor then they're just doing it differently that's not what i'm saying i don't know if it's the same one or not but they definitely change the style just a little bit um it is different for a movie and a game um if you've played the original final fantasy 7 then you know the dialogue is going to substantially change and characters are going to substantially change as the game progresses with their attitudes and stuff, especially with Sephiroth. Because at this point in the game, Sephiroth is kind of normal. Um, so that could be why his voice is the way that it is. But I'll be interested to see how it goes as the game progresses. I don't want to spoil anything. But Cloud looks really tired. Um, I can't tell if it's directly after the fight or not with the Red Scorpion or not, but um, Cloud looks exhausted. And the detail here is just amazing. I mean, it is really something else. It is not final game footage, but it's got to be pretty close. I mean, the character renders definitely look close to done. The the battles, I definitely can see some some bugginess and stuff, but um, so they'll improve that. But overall, very good look at the game. Very very excited. Uh, we get the infamous Final Fantasy VII Remake logo, which looks amazing. And then, more to come in June. So at E3, we're getting more Final Fantasy VII news, and I think it's going to be extremely in-depth. I think we're going to get some very in-depth gameplay on this game. I think we're going to get more characters revealed, probably Yuffie, Tifa, and Vincent. More Sephiroth stuff, and I think we're going to get maybe a bit more explanation in terms of... Um, how the game's going to be released, maybe not a release date, but how the game's going to be put together and stuff. Um, it really depends on how much they elaborate. I'll be interested to see the post interviews and stuff with Katase and Nomura because they got a lot to answer to and we got a lot of questions. So I'm really excited to see what, what happens here with FF7 Remake. Um, the most important takeaway is, two most important takeaways. Uh, a few days ago when they announced the state of play, the very, very specific verbiage was there is no next generation content in this state of play. Which means this game, and obviously if we can see it on the screen here, is still planned and will come out on the PS4. This is not PS5. The interesting thing is too, next year, more than likely, the PlayStation 5 is going to come out. So I cannot see a scenario where they're marketing this game while PS5 is being marketed. You know how people are. First of all, they would be like, Oh my god, look how great the PS5 is. Why was FF7 Remake? And it, it could hurt the game. And people are still going to buy the share of this game. Don't get me wrong. But if they want to maximize sales, to me, it seems like they're going to stick with the formula and market it. And guys we could be up on that time we could be coming pretty close to our a release date i think i think it's highly possible um it sounds kind of wild but if you remember we got this trailer back in 2012 2013 or whatever by next year it'll be 2020 so that's about seven years so it's not wild to think about it's not impossible if, if i were to take a wild guess right now and a very ambitious guess and realistic guess, I would think spring of 2020. Very similar to how Kingdom Hearts came out, 
Uh, Kingdom Hearts came out in January. I don't think it'd be that early, but I do think March. I think a March release for this game is extremely possible. Um, again, it just depends on this whole episodic thing. If the game is being released in parts, how they do that. Is it going to be an entirely different physical disc that we have to go buy? Is it going to be DLC? Um, because if they're, you know, like discs for PlayStation 1, you get four, uh, three discs. That's how it's going to be formatted. It's really not a huge deal. People are making this big deal about it being episodic. And to me, it's like, look, we already had three discs. That's episodic in itself back then to fit all the content on there. So for, for me, it's like whatever you have to do to make this game special, whatever you have to do to make it hit right here and make it a fantastic game, you do it. And if it's me spending $60 on a whole game and $40 on DLC or um, other installments, it is what it is. Hell, if I have to pay $60 <laughs> per installment, I will do it. Cash grab all you want because this is a game and Final Fantasy 7 people know this. This is a game you would do that for. And for me, the only other game I would do that for is Final Fantasy VIII because I want that more than seven. But that's a different conversation. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you guys want to see more Final Fantasy VII remake coverage or just Square Enix Final Fantasy coverage in general, I can do that on the channel. I've also thought about making an entirely separate channel specifically for that content. Right now, we don't have any Pokemon news. So I, I saw this as a great opportunity to kind of cover and give you guys my passion of Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy in general. I love this series. So I would love to keep bringing that to you guys. Let me know if you would like me to. So I greatly appreciate you guys watching. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of the trailer, when we'll get news, and what the release date's going to be. So I appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. Like the video if you liked it. If you down liked it, please let me know what I can do better. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. New 17, I am out. Peace.